Welcome to the RSP Boiler Room. I'm Matt Waldman. The Boiler Room features analysis that I would share with NFL decision makers if they asked for a handful of plays that illustrates the talent, skills, limitations, or developmental potential of an NFL prospect. Let's talk Royce Freeman. Six plays against USC at the end of the 2015 season reveal a runner with the physical skills to hang in the NFL if he develops a more intellectual approach to the position. At 6 feet, 230 pounds, Freeman has good feet. Watch him bounce this play outside and dip downhill on the edge defender. Now watch it again and note how he shortens his stride at the exchange to read the field and then make a nice plant and cut outside and then follow it up with a stutter and cut downhill of the flat defender. He's a nifty runner. Here's another nice read and setup of the crease with the help of his footwork. He chops his stride to slow the approach to the crease and when it opens, Freeman accelerates through it. This is exactly what you want on certain zone runs where there's a double team and potential for one of those blockers to peel off the first assignment and reach a second defender. Freeman buys time to read the two double teams ahead of him and when the outside double team of the tight end and left tackle yields an angle for the tight end to peel to the linebacker, Freeman hits the gas and gets an easy first down. He even beats the safety with a little two-step and bend to the middle of the field. At the next level, Freeman will need to get the most out of his footwork if he wants to have a pro career that mimics his 2015 season with the Ducks. Watch him on the zone play with a tight end winding inside and you'll notice the alteration of his stride once again to draw the linebacker to the middle before he bounces it to the edge. It's good footwork, but once Freeman reaches the Oregon 25, he lacks the jets to outrun the safety in pursuit from the far hash. Freeman has speed to produce in the NFL, but he's not a breakaway threat. To get the most from every play, he'll have to show strong skills at reading the line of scrimmage and understanding the nuts and bolts of the line play to create those creases, and he'll have to have mature decision making that incorporates the context of scheme design and down and distance. As of 2015, Freeman has more work ahead. Here's a counter play against six defenders in the box. The right guard and wing back pull to the left side. Freeman initially takes the path behind the wing back, and like the previous two runs, he chops his stride to set up his blocks. But once he sees the inside gap filled and some clean space on the periphery, Freeman immediately bounces the play to the edge. But the cut back on a gap play is fool's gold, and Freeman has to drop his hip, stop his stride, and shift back inside where he's met head on for a short loss. Freeman's a 230 pound back with great yards after contact stats, but he's trying to get cute on a second and five gap play? This won't go over well in the NFL. In this situation and play call, Freeman needs to do one of two things. Either one, hit the gap up the middle, squares pads and push downhill so he can take what he can get and set up a third and short for his team, which is the preferable choice here. But if he's going to bounce it out outside, he needs to do it behind the guard's pulling block, and it's going to be something where he's got to set it up to continue that initial approach closer to the line of scrimmage so he draws the defense to the middle and then bounces it outside where his pulling guard seals the edge. This isn't the only time Freeman doesn't follow the play design of a gap scheme. Here's an even more egregious decision of this type also on a counter play. The right guard and tight end pull left as the quarterback and running back execute an exchange that's directed to the right side. But instead of Freeman setting up and executing the counter action, he continues to the right edge going one-on-one -on -one with the edge containment four yards in the backfield. You can even see the quarterback react as if he expected Freeman to go a different direction than he did. Either this was a mix-up with the play call or Freeman ignored the design. And it's not uncommon for star runners at the college level to lack thorough understanding of blocking schemes. At this level, they can get away with it because they have that top percentile athletic ability. In the NFL, the playing level's even enough that it's rare to see consistent success without a more studied knowledge of blocking schemes. Although Freeman wins the edge on the containment, it's a minimal gain against the linebacker in pursuit. And in the NFL, this is likely a loss of four to five yards against the edge defender. Or if he gets past 
the edge defender and faces down the linebacker, he's still probably going to lose a yard or two. What you want to see from Freeman on a gap play is what he does here. He follows the right guard, spots the free defender unblocked in the crease, and then drops the pads into contact. Freeman attacks the defender at the 24 and pushes his way three yards to the 27. Freeman will have to take the workmanlike approach more often in the NFL. And he has the size, the pad level, the footwork, and the vision really to do it. What he needs is the maturity and understanding of all blocking schemes to become a true professional at it. Even if his 2015 tape doesn't reveal as polished of a runner as some may expect, I like what I've seen from Freeman. If he commits to becoming a student of the game, he can have a productive career on Sundays. Thanks again for watching the RSP Boiler Room. For more Film Room analysis, subscribe to the RSP Film Room channel on YouTube and follow my blog at www.mattwaldmanrsp.com.